Okay, this is Frank from Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours, and today we're going to do a video entitled The 73rd Ohio at Gettysburg. And we just got done looking at the right flank marker for the 73rd Ohio. And as we walk through the annex of the Gettysburg National Cemetery, we're going to walk over to the monument of the 73rd Ohio, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the monument its commander, and the unit's role in the Battle of Gettysburg on July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 1863. Now, the 73rd Ohio at Gettysburg was a part of the 11th Corps, 2nd Division, 2nd Brigade under Colonel Orlin Smith. The 2nd Brigade was made up of a total of 1,638 soldiers with two Ohio units in the brigade, one New York and one Massachusetts unit. The 73rd was one of the smaller units, only having a strength of 338 men going into battle. Now, Lieutenant Colonel Richard Long Jr. commanded the 73rd Ohio at Gettysburg. The monument here in the annex was dedicated on Ohio Day, September the 17th of 1887. However, the monument wasn't originally placed here. It was placed just a few yards to our right on the Tawny Town Road, and that is Lieutenant Colonel Richard Long Jr., the commanding officer of the 73rd Ohio here at Gettysburg. On the first day, the Battle of Gettysburg as 11th Corps soldiers retreated from the north and west of town, mostly from the north end of town. They retreated back through the town of Gettysburg and ended up here on Cemetery Hill between the Baltimore Pike and the Tawny Town Road. The 73rd Ohio was originally in a line on the Baltimore Pike, but was moved over to this position on July 2nd of 1863. They would soon take place in an action known as Smith's Ridge, again under their brigade commander, Orland Smith, which today is the Colt Park section of Gettysburg. The brigade would go out in a westerly direction with the 136th New York Infantry on the left, the 73rd Ohio here in the center, and to their right, the 55th Ohio. The photograph that we're looking at now is what the battlefield would have looked like in 1863. You can see Seminary Ridge, you can see Smith's Ridge, you can see the Lutheran Seminary. Where we will be going today is the center arrow known as Smith's Ridge. This is where the 73rd Ohio was engaged on the afternoon of July 2nd of 1863. Orland Smith was charged with protecting and holding Cemetery Hill and protecting the guns and the gunners that was on Cemetery Hill. In the distance to the west, along a small crest, and then just beyond in a lane, were Confederate soldiers and sharpshooters. So Orland Smith ordered his brigade forward. Now going back to the original placement of the monument, it was placed in this area along the Tawny Town Pike in 1887, as you can see in the photograph. The problem with that, since it was outside the wall here of the cemetery, um, once the automobile took over uh, from dirt roads into paved roads, it, it, was, it was struck several times, as you see here in a newspaper clipping. And it was decided later that the monument would be moved from along the Tawny Town Road into the annex of the Gettysburg National Cemetery, where it sits today. Now, as we look at the monument uh, across the Tawny Town Road, we're going to take a little... Uh, move a little bit southbound where we're going to see the other flank marker, the left flank marker. Now, we began the video at the right flank marker. Now we're going to go to the left flank marker. And it was in between these two flanks that the monument actually stood. Um, today, you can see the left flank marker by walking or driving down the Tawny Town Road. And as I zoom in, you'll see it there in between the fence rail post and the telephone pole. Now, 
As to the role of the 73rd Ohio, as you see the map, this is the map when they moved the monument from its position over to where you see the X there where it sits today. But on July 2nd, 1863, Smith ordered two companies, Company B and Company G of the 73rd Ohio forward in a skirmish line as skirmishers with the 136 New York to his left in support. And these men would have moved down today what is Queen Street in Gettysburg. Now, when you drive up or walk up Queen Street, you'll notice it goes at a slight rise. So we're going to do that now. And as you see here, the, the History Center, we're, we're on Queen Street. And you can see how the road goes up to a rise. That rise will be the crisscrossing of Fairview Avenue, which was the crest of Smith's Ridge in 1863, which we showed in that old photograph. Well, these two companies of skirmishers were moving in this direction. And in particular, there's one or two people that I want to talk about in this action as we show a map of the movements at the fight for Smith's Ridge on July 2nd of 1863. Now, these men moved forward as skirmishers. Skirmish lines are usually a little bit more broken apart. The men are spread out a little bit, and they're basically feelers for the army. They go out in front of the front line and feel the enemy's strength and then report that strength back to your own Union line. So they're moving in this direction toward the crest of the ridge. One man that's in Company B is a man named Private George Nixon. Nixon left his wife and children in Ohio to sign up and fight in the American Civil War. Here, on July 2nd, near the ridge where you see the dotted line were Confederate skirmishers. And as he was approaching this area here, which is today Fairview Avenue, he was struck twice. The second wound, which was a mortal wound. Now, the area that he was actually mortally wounded in has been debated for some time, but it's very, very close to where we are standing. In fact, just this year, in the year 2023, a man at 730 Fairview Avenue erected a plaque in his yard, which you can see there, that gives as close as we know possible based on some overlaid maps of the spot that Private George Nixon was mortally wounded on July 2nd of 1863. So if you get a chance, you can come over here to the sidewalk without invading the property and take a, a, a quick look at this, this plaque. This plaque was privately funded by the man that owns the house who also is a Civil War reenactor. So it's not an official monument or marker or tablet of the battlefield, but it just is one of the uh, many privately placed monuments or plaques on the battlefield. And here's a photo of um, Richard Enderlin and George Nixon. Now, fate would have it because... As these two companies were skirmishing with Confederate infantry on July 2nd and went, men started becoming wounded, Enderlin, who was a musician back on Cemetery Hill, began to hear the screams and cries of these wounded soldiers. And he had a friend, George Nixon, who he asked permission to go find. And he ended up coming back out here, finding a mortally wounded Nixon, and then dragging him back the way we are driving towards Cemetery Hill in an effort to save his life. This story does have a sad ending. However, Nixon was taken to a field hospital, the George Spangler farm, and he died on July 10th of 1863 there and is buried today in the National Cemetery. The good part of the story is Enderlid, for his her heroism, um, was promoted to a sergeant and then later was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his actions here at Gettysburg. You should go back and watch some of my video series like the Bliss Farm and the 11th Corps arrival at Gettysburg 
to give you some context of this video. We are now in the Gettysburg National Cemetery, Ohio plot. And as I walk through the plots, um, I will slow up when we come to the soldiers of the 73rd Ohio. Most of these dead soldiers who are buried here today were actually wound, mortally wounded or killed at the Battle of Smith's Ridge. Um, right where we just came from, walked, and drove through. Um, the battlefield today, which has basically been ruined by the uh, building of the Colt Park development section of Gettysburg. But these are the men that fought and died on this field, including that of Private George Nixon, the great-grandfather of 37th President Richard Milhouse Nixon, who, as Vice President and later President of the United States, would come back here on several occasions to visit the grave of his great-grandfather. And in fact, he did once say that had George Nixon not got his wife pregnant before he left for the war, um, then the family line would have ended with George Nixon's death here at Gettysburg. So as I've done with several other videos, like the Six Wisconsin, um, I end up coming back here to the cemetery, to the state, and to the plots of the soldiers that are related to this particular video. And again, talk about a story that often isn't mentioned on your cookie cutter history tours that you get when you come to Gettysburg. These are not tours that you'll generally get with a licensed guide, park ranger, or even the audio tours because they're a little bit more off the beaten path. So I want to thank you for watching this video. Please share it with your friends. And this has been the 73rd Ohio at Gettysburg, the Battle of Smith's Ridge, here on Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours. And I have been your tour guide, Frank Patrick Marone, Jr.